Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 7th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Salt Lake City, Utah. Brad looked in his diary entry from Tuesday at three samples of Locky Bot. Now, don't confuse it with the crypto ransomware Locky. Instead, Locky Bot is an information stealer that will steal usernames and passwords. The three samples that uh, Brad looked at here are looking sort of slightly different techniques in order to get onto users' systems, but in common, they are using email attachments. Now, in some cases, these are zipped files. In other cases, these are office documents. So a wide range of initial exploits to actually get onto the user's system. The malware the user ends up with is then pretty much identical in its functionality. So unlike other malware that in particular sort of has these runs there for a couple days, they're using a certain email wording and a certain attachment, Lockybot varies things more, which of course makes filtering a little bit more tricky. And as expected, Adobe released a patch day for Adobe Flash Player. As expected, this update does fix a vulnerability that was used to attack as users in South Korea. Now, there's a second vulnerability that's also being addressed with this update. The second vulnerability was apparently not yet used in the wild, but it can also lead to remote code execution. This wasn't actually the normal scheduled Tuesday patch day. That will happen next week and I'm not sure if we'll get another patch from Adobe or if this was it for February. And Crammarly fixed a critical vulnerability in the extension for Google Chrome. Crammarly, if you're not familiar with it, is a service that will apply spell checks, grammar checks to documents that you're writing. Now, you don't actually need a browser extension to use the service quite often. It's just used by uploading documents to the Crammarly website. If you are installing the browser extension, then you do have the option to actually use Grammarly within input forms. And that's sort of where the problem happens. If a Grammarly finds an input form on a web page, it automatically activates itself for that input form. And due to that vulnerability, a website was then able to extract your Grammarly authentication token from this extension. The problem with this is that an attacker could now use this authentication token, log in to Grammarly using this authentication token, and with that, the attack would have access to any other documents that you uploaded to Grammarly. In general, uh, you have to keep in mind that Grammarly, the way the service works is, well, you're uploading your documents into Grammarly's cloud, so you are already sharing them at least with Grammarly. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for highly confidential documents. It's a nice service for things like uh, papers that you have to write for school. I know a lot of our SDI students are using it and uh, for similar purposes. And of course, the extension, you could enable it only for specific websites where you actually would like to have Grammarly's assistance. But well, Grammarly released an update, so try to apply that as soon as possible. And last fall, Microsoft released the Windows 10 Creators Update. And with this update, a new feature was introduced, protected folders. The idea is to essentially combat ransomware by not allowing untrusted software to modify files in specific folders. The trick here is that some software is trusted and of course the Microsoft Office suite is trusted. Now, Spanish security researcher Yahoo Jesus came up with a pretty interesting way to use this to bypass actually this protection. He wrote a Python script that does, well, just use Microsoft Word to open documents within a protected folder and then save them again, but save them 
encrypted using Microsoft Word's own password feature. This essentially accomplishes the same thing that ransomware typically accomplishes, but uh, does not get blocked by the protected folders feature. Now, Yahoo did notify Microsoft. Microsoft replied that it doesn't consider this a vulnerability, but will be working on a more effective protection in the future. And if you remember April last year, Shadow Broker released a number of pretty advanced tools. And some of the tools you may remember that caused a lot of attention, for example, like Double Pulsa or the Eternal Blue exploit. Now, with that, they also released a number of covert channels that were essentially used in order to remote control some of the systems infected by these tools, for example, by the Double Pulsar backdoor. Researchers at Force Point now looked closer at the traffic generated by these tools, like Pebble Cheap and Dander Spritz. Not only did they publish a paper with lots of details about how these protocols work and how to detect them. They also via GitHub released some packet captures that you can use then to, for example, test your own signatures and protection solutions. It's not very likely that you see a lot of this traffic in the wild at this point, but certainly can be used in order to identify systems that, for example, had the double pulsar backdoor installed. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.